The William L. McKnight Stakes is a grade three, running a mile and a half on the turf for four-year-olds and up. And it's the eighth race on the Pegasus World Cup card at Gulfstream on Saturday. And if we take a look at this field, you can see there's quite a few also eligibles. Uh, there's um, four of them, and, and there will be probably good reason for that. There are a couple of horses who are cross-entered in here, uh, Anglophile and Grand Sonata. And Red Run is dual-entered. Uh, at Sam Houston on the same day. So there's likely going to be uh, some kind of mix and match going on here. But it is a big field. It's uh, it's very balanced in that I don't see necessarily anybody has an edge over anybody else. Uh, but in looking at the field, form to me is the determinant because there's a lot of horses in here who have been in bad form or are struggling. And uh, so uh, I think it's, uh, it's a good betting race from that perspective. So we'll take a look at how we're going to play it, and we'll look at them one by one. Uh, Jealous is one that just uh, is kind of doing okay, but um, I, I, don't, uh, uh, I, I don't see necessarily class-wise where at this stage of the game for this one at six years old is going to miraculously become a graded stakes horse. Um, I just don't really see it. So uh, there isn't much pace, in fact, no pace in this race. So I expect Chellis to try to probably go to the lead or be up and near it. And that is a good position to be in in this race, but um, I don't think it is good enough uh, to win it. Stone Age, we've been waiting for uh, the resurrection since the Breeders' Cup uh, turf last year. And coming back from abroad and this horse really hasn't found uh the way yet now chad brown's barn is cold as ice at gulfstream right now and this one is definitely a project and he's got three in here chad brown does and they're all you know they're all just kind of really vulnerable um stone age is um uh is a little fresher i guess and because of the running style of for this race i would say is a good fit uh, I'm not overly confident with uh, with Stone Age because it just has been a disappointment. Something's awry. They just haven't figured out a way to get this one going yet. Uh, but we'll be up near the lead, and that is a good place to be. Uh, Marwad has was a uh, has been a routine disappointment, um, and um, I hasn't been able to uh, to find the form since the McDermott last year. And I don't expect uh, he'll find it here, so he's a toss. Value Engineering last year at this time was uh, one of the picks to win this race. Uh, but since uh, since the McDermott, I believe, he really hasn't uh, done very well. He, and he seems to be rapidly regressing. Eight years old, father time, I think, maybe has caught up with him. So we'll toss. Uh, Palazzi's a deep closer. And uh, I think is in, in coming into this race in pretty good form. Uh, I don't think the race shape sets up terribly well for Palazzi, but he is in good form and at 15 to 1. I think you can use him, but because of his running style, I think underneath is probably more likely. Which leads us to Verstappen. This should be a race Verstappen wins. Um, he has the right running style being just off the pace. He'll get first jump on the late runners. Uh, the thing is, he hasn't uh, necessarily built on that Elkhorn win he got at Keeneland last year. Uh, he's done pretty well. He's been a, a pretty solid performer, and his last race was uh, was a good one. So he's coming into this race fresh, and that's really the, the, the key here, I think, that puts him ahead of a lot of these horses. And I'd have to say Verstappen would be the most likely win candidate for me at this point. Uh, Grand Sonata, I've given up on. My last race was, uh, I thought, a scenario that he could have won, and uh, he didn't, once again. Uh, he's been a perennial disappointment. I'm not going to chase money, uh, chase him again, and, and uh, be disappointed, so I'll pass. Rock Emperor, at his best, can, be, can win this race and be a, a factor. He just hasn't been so great lately. Um, he is another one that disappoints quite often at 10 to 1, probably going to be lower than that. And uh, I don't want to, uh, I don't, you have to have a price in this race. And he's just kind of shaky to me. So I'll pass on Rock Emperor. Anglophile is trained by Brian Lynch, who's just lights out at Gulfstream right now. His last race, he had a, uh, 
He did lose position early, but he re-rallied and showed a lot of pluck coming up late. Now, buyer-wise, I think he's a little light, but he has run a 95 before. And coming into this race, second off the layoff, it's possible that he could take a jump forward. Uh, he's still kind of young. And I like the fact that uh, he's trained by Brian Lynch. and I, uh, So I think there's a, a lot of things to like, particularly at 12 to 1. Uh, if he stays in this race, uh, I think he's a must use uh, for sure. Red Run uh, really hasn't been, uh, his form has been declining and I think just needs a break. Is cross entered at Sam uh, Houston on Saturday, and I wouldn't be surprised if he goes there. Maybe a softer field, better chance to win. Uh, Francisco Francisco Clemente, uh, I suppose you could say, is the class of this field, but he's a horse that's run primarily run a lot in California, and we know that the, the turf class there is kind of subpar compared to the East. Uh, he needs a lot of help pace wise, in my opinion. He's a late deep closer, late runner. Uh, he's going to have uh, a chance to work out a trip, but I don't know that he's going to have pace to run to, and I think his position is likely compromised. You can certainly use him. I think he's in decent enough form, but I don't think he's a lock to win this race, um, and this is a tricky one for sure, but uh, we'll use him. I, I think under is more likely, though. Uh, California Frolic, just not good enough, bottom line, and uh, don't think it's worth uh, investing in. Now, if we look, there are also eligibles here. Uh, starting over, I, I didn't see enough to get excited about. Um, F5, if F5 draws in, I would really love to see this horse in this race. Has the early pace running style, uh, is trained by Brian Lynch, and at 12 to 1 offers excellent value. If this horse can get in and get on the lead, has a very good chance to take them all the way. Uh, so if F5 draws in, uh, it'll tall order. It's got to gotta have a lot of defections, but I'd like to see this horse in this race. Shoddy, shoddy, shoddy. Uh, just isn't, I, again, never really been a big fan of this horse, and uh, I think it's pushing it to put this one in graded stakes. Um, you are getting 30 to 1, maybe could get up uh, underneath. Uh, and so the price is appealing from that perspective, and if he draws in, maybe you go that route, but otherwise I don't want him. Uh, catch that party looks to me one that is in pretty good form, uh, is a late runner, which I think is a disadvantage in this field. But you're getting 20 to 1. Uh, Mike Maker has upgraded the jockey to Javier Castellano. I think that's a really good sign. And if catch that party draws in uh, at 20 to 1, I would use, particularly in this field, where there's so many horses that were suspect. So if we look at our wagering strategy for this race, certainly it depends on who draws in and who scratches. Uh, if we have uh, some defections, which I think we're probably going to, we can get F5 in the race. I really like F5 to win this. And uh, if uh, he draws in, I think you go win, place, and show across the board at 12 to 1. I think you get outstanding value. If not, uh, Anglophile, to me, I think offers the best value. It's coming into the race in good form. Again, the most important thing in this race. Has the right running style uh, to be up near the leaders and can't get first jump. And you're getting 12 to 1, really good price. So if uh, without F5 in the race, I would go with Anglophile across the board. Then um, I think the earlier runners are, are going to have uh, the best chance to win this. So I would just exact a box, uh, 3, 7, and 11, Stone Age versus Stoppin and Anglophile. Um, I think they have the, uh, the best chances to win. Probably if I did, you had to isolate me on one horse, I'd say Verstappen is probably the one who has, uh, should win this race. Uh, but I, I think it's there's a little bit of uncertainty here, so I would box, and particularly since uh, you can get value uh, given the uh, given the odds of the horses. Again, if F5 draws in, I would throw out Stone Age, uh, Stone Age rather, and put in F5, and then you box those three, seven, eleven, sixteen, and you get uh, you do you know going to get a really nice payout because you've got two twelve to one horses in. If they go one two both Brian Lynch's, then you max out completely. Trifecta is awful tricky. Um, you know, I uh, 
I would I just throw one in here if just to give an idea. I'd go three seven eleven three seven eleven with one three six seven eleven fourteen, and of course uh, you would sub in F five for Stone Age. So you go seven eleven sixteen seven eleven sixteen with one three six seven eleven. 1416. Uh, just a crazy one. I don't know that I even do a trifecta, but I'm throwing one in here just as a, a frame of reference if it's something you normally do. That's that's maybe what I would do, but I'd probably stick to exactas and win place here because this is a crazy race. I mean, there's just so much vulnerability. It's really hard to, to find uh, the silver lining here. So we, we need value. We're going to go for it. We plant our flag and hope we're right. Uh, I don't know that I'd spend a whole lot of money on this race, given the fact that the uh, the shape of it is so screwy because there's so much vulnerability in the field. But uh, anyway, just an idea on how maybe to attack it.